Welcome to the Tony Gomez Show. Hell yeah. Tonight, I want to welcome Overt Enemy as my guest to the show. Guys, how y'all doing tonight? What's up? Doing awesome, man. Enjoying a drink. Happy to be here. Hanging out, man. Thank you so much. Dude. Thanks for being my guest. So, guys, if, if uh, all my viewers on your right, on your stage right, that's Robert Hahn, guitars, middle, Leo Ortiz, guitars and vocals. And to the right, we got Laura Ortiz, Slayerella on bass. Hell yeah. And, and, now, and vocals and guitar and vocals. Yeah. Oh, shit. You got three vocals going on there? Oh, it all comes out. Yeah. Right. This this new little bit of uh, music that we're coming out with, everybody's doing all. It's it's spread out. We switch so we instruments. Got, he plays drums. It's crazy. We got Laura Holy on. Holy shit. Switching instruments even? Hell no, yeah. no. I'm fucking around. Well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he can play drums. Right, like so I write some of the drum pieces. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> Very cool. Dude. Hey, I like that, dude. Hey, but I've always been a fan of the more backup vocals. So that, that's that streamline. Like you kind of got those those gang vocals going on in the hard parts, you know, uh, whether it's sing alongs or just like an anthem or something. You got a great team backing you up right there, Leo. That's super cool, man. I'm looking forward to see. I'm going to talk about it here in a little bit, but I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here in Corpus. You guys are going to be uh, playing with my friends in Throat Locust, opening up for Wednesday 13 and Black Satellite and the fucking legendary Fear Factory. Fuck yeah. it. That's going to be a great gig, man. I can't wait to have you guys at our house of rock um, opening up uh, for the for Fear Factory, dude. That's going to be amazing. How does that feel? Feels badass, awesome. man. Hell yeah. Uh, I can think back to the first time we did that, and it was just it was surreal, you know. And Dino's yeah. a bat, and he he like leveled with us, and he chatted with us. He's a real cool guy. He's he's, he's like family around here. Uh, <laughs> Max yeah. and Max, like gang, same thing, man. They were just really cool with us, and uh, you know we always try to return the favor by doing you know the best that we can, and fucking you know and, and raising the stakes for everybody. But when they come out, you know, just trying to bump everybody. Up. Fucking absolutely dude oh man that's super tight dude well i tell you what let me get started by just talking about how how did overt enemy get formed well that would be my department there so okay long time ago i want to say like 11 years ago now um maybe even longer when when yeah when jeff hanneman passed away um I had an opportunity to join this group of guys to do a tribute show. It was a one-off thing. It was going to happen here at one of our local venues, a very popular venue for metal and, and thrash and punk the and stuff. Shop. The, the Hot Shop, shop in Harlem. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fuck yeah, it is. I love Carlos, the owner. He's a great guy. And many thanks and props to all the guys there in Harlingen. Uh, they've always been real badass with us. But yeah, man, it was just a one-off <laughs> show. And... Um, I got together with my my a good friend of mine, uh, Marcos Hernandez, and and Rudy. Uh, uh, I think it was Rudy Gallegos, and, and and we just hung out. And um, they're like, "Hey, we're gonna do the show. You want to come along? We need a bass player and a vocalist." So I was like, "Okay, let's get it done." Jaime, I am. Oh yeah, and 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 Jaime, I think he joined us. Uh, uh, I want to say he did drums for you guys. He did do drums, but it was like I think he was the second drummer in line. But no, no, Jaime did. Yeah, he was part of that. So Jaime Ayala did uh, help us produce our first two releases. Just so you know, Jaime Ayala, I, gotta, I love that guy, man. He's a My he's brother. a great friend of ours, uh, brother to me and 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 to Rob and to Laura. Um, he's he's currently jamming with the band Belligerency. So y'all need to check them out if you haven't oh, heard yeah. of Marlingen. They are sick. Them. They're still churning the metal. But yeah, so it started like that. It's just a one-off show. And we, you know, me being creative, I thought I was like, hey, maybe we should all just kind of put on like the the theatrical part. Everybody's going to wear like a, a wig and uh, we'll have whoever's doing uh, 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 Carrie King's portion is going to wear a fucking uh, a skull cap, cap, right? A ball yeah. cap. Uh -huh. And <laughs> you know, like, so Marcos was Jeff Hanneman. I was Tom Mariah. And Rudy was wearing Kerry King's bald cap. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, and Jaime, Jaime was wearing that military hat. He was trying to be uh, uh, Dave, Dave, Dave Lombardo. Lombardo. All right. Fuck yeah. yeah. You know, we, we practice up. Uh, we got a good, like, I want to say, like, eight, maybe 10 songs together. And 
man, let me tell you, we showed up and the whole show was a fucking mess. Oh so shit! The first, the first two bands that were supposed to open, they, didn't show up. they didn't show up. bailed on us. Oh no! Fuck! It was like, what the fuck are we gonna do? So I got up there and to add more songs. I got up there <laughs> with with uh, uh, I don't, uh, with Jaime and another, I think another guitar player, and we had to throw like a, a 15, 20 minute show <laughs> to cover yeah. the other two bands that bailed on us. But yeah. Let me tell you. As soon as it was time for us to go on, it was standing room only. Oh shit, badass! I don't ever think uh, I had seen the hop shop that packed. Uh, until wow! Then. And it was like you know the stakes are up, and now like the pressure's on. It's like holy yeah. shit! Um, you know we did some covers uh, earlier before the show, but now it's like we got to really do them justice. And man, we had such a freaking blast! It was just amazing, amazing Fun, to see. Yes. Like I said, it was standing room only. So it was like it was like all the way from the front to the back. It's just like I, I don't know how, how many people fit in that venue. It was like two hundred and something. Two hundred cap venue. Damn. 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 The door <laughs> was flowing. I mean, I was getting sprayed with with alcohol and yeah, nights going, and we're like, let's just nail this shit. And I actually have video of that somewhere. So maybe I'll share that with you post it later. Yeah, hell, it was such an amazing show, man. We had such a good time. We had such a good response. I couldn't even believe the response because not even a week later, we got asked. We got yeah. we got cats asking us to do shows. Hey, what are you going to play again? What, what are you going to play, play again? Yeah, Where what are you going? Can can you come and do a private show for us here? Can you do this for us here? And they were just like, I was like, it's just a one thing, one off thing. Yeah. So long, um, we started doing uh, uh, you know tribute shows, and that's how we became Overt Enemy, a tribute band. Oh, hey. Started doing shows, uh, private shows. Uh, I think we did one private show in uh, Boca Chica uh, uh, Beach over there by Boca Chica Beach, and they had a caterer come in, and they had free beers all night, and they set yeah, up everything. Yeah. We just had to go and play, and they're yeah, like, huh? "We love Slayer so much that we just want you guys to come and play." Dude, so Ali loves fucking Slayer. So yeah, so after that, it just came, it became a thing. We started working on it and working on our, 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 you know. Our skills at Slayer, and we, you know, we had a set list that was uh, a little bit over 50 minutes long, and then we got better and better and better. But then, you know, life happens, and you know, some of the guys said like, "Hey, I got to go to college." So Rudy took off, you know, he 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 branched off and went to college. So we replaced Rudy with another guitar player, and that's how I ended up becoming guitar. Because Rudy took like bass. Bass. Yeah, I was originally. playing bass originally. I was playing like I was doing just Tom Mariah shit. Yeah. Then when Rudy had to go, I was like, okay, uh, we need to fill in that that guitar part. So I said, you know what, fuck it, I'll do the guitar part, and we'll get another bass player, and we'll just kind of have, you know, I'll still do the vocals, and we'll get a bass player. Well, yeah. this is how my sweet senorita over here came into the band, <laughs> my wife, my loving wife. Did so she, she play had, bass for a band before this? She had been at every practice, and she had been practicing. I knew, I knew a little bit. She knew how to play wow. a little bit of bass. But nothing prepared us for, you know, what came. <laughs> Seriously. We yeah. were really trying to find somebody to fill the bass spot. And it's like, fuck, what do we do? And you know, I was like, you know what? Let's ask my wife. Laura knows one song. Here. She knows. She knows. She knows our mandatory whole practice. suicide. She, right. She knows our <laughs> whole practice. She knows one song on the bass. Let's, you know, let's have her sit in until we get somebody to come and fill in. Well, that okay. didn't happen. I sat in. Exactly. So she came <laughs> yeah. in. She sat yeah. in songs and then it was like fuck this is awesome it just fuck, yeah held. and by the next practice she had like already memorized all of the jams <laughs> oh shit there, we go. there there goes there goes uh uh over at enemy we kicked off the the whole tribute thing yeah jam more doing a whole a whole bunch more shows we did uh mike pizzeria remember, remember that yes, that was such mike, a badass taste of chicago. venue taste of chicago yeah, yeah. mike taste of chicago it was like a drive through pizzeria uh, we did a bunch of other uh, venues, like after Thirsty Mike Monkey, though, right? but then you came in a little bit, just we a little bit before, later. Did yeah. you, you guys played Mike's? Yeah, we had we played, played Mike's, Mike's and we played a, a couple of other shows. This place is so cool. Thirsty it Monkey, was. you know, they're downtown McAllen. Okay. Uh, I think there was another place. I can't even remember the damn place. It was just this rundown little little shithole. Uh, <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> also... Um, um, the blues place. What's that over there in far? Remember it? 
What was his name? Oh, Johnny. Johnny's, Johnny's Barbecue. Barbecue. You played Johnny's We've Barbecue? No shit. Okay. All right. Uh, a, a legendary place. I love Johnny. It's gone. And, and, and I, I love Johnny's gone. Barbecue. It was right next to like a, uh, like a, uh, yeah, like, like a metal dump uh, area. But man, that's where we Very first cool. came out. And so once that, you know, started building up more traction, Marcos, my, my brother, my good friend said, hey, man, I'm going to have to tap out. I got to move to San Antonio. I got life to take care of. I said, don't worry about it, man. We'll fill your shoes or we'll do our best trying. And then, yes. uh, you know, me and Jaime and Laura were, were trying out new people. And then before long, we ran into Rob. And Rob has been my friend since, I want to say, it's been, what, 22 years now? 24 years. 24 fucking years. Killer. All right. I first started jamming when I was jamming with my cousin Edward in bands. And uh, he had... You know, we were doing a thing back in the day. I think we had a show, a band called Strict Nine. Remember yeah, that? Strict Nine. And I was doing, I was doing backup vocals with them. Yeah, it was like a new metal band. We had like two yeah. singers and two a DJ. Singers, and like, whole, like year two. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. So, so like, he he kind of got out of the picture for a couple of years, but then like all of were, a sudden, my kids were small, so I kind of stopped playing for a exactly. Of so years. okay. So all, like you know it's like we're, we're we're trying out these band guys we're trying out these guitar players and rob's like well fuck i'll, I'll fucking try out i was like really yeah well cool. i never even thought of that because he was playing bass before he was playing bass okay. for another band uh rabbit, rabbit Cadaver Cadaver Dogs. Dogs, yeah. my one of my home i mean one of my favorite bands of all times too and we have a lot of with rabbit um so yeah he's like fuck yeah i'll do i'll fucking fill in no problem so like it was between this guy and then rob and rob you know he came Back in with everything. He's like, I already memorized the songs. I already got all my shit together. Hell um, yeah. Yeah, Rob. So he came and joined us. I think what like, year would you think that what year that happened? Oh fuck. Rob, when did you join? What like it was a year after ago? I did. Twelve years. Was that 30. before you did you started doing the EPs? Well, it was oh, right yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. Right before. Before. Okay. Yeah, right so so when maybe I joined, seventeen. Yeah, uh, uh, 2016. Yeah, it was a little bit like 2015, 2016. 2015. Okay, all right. Okay. So, so I, I joined up, and um, uh, the interesting thing was that um, I'd never learned covers at all. Okay. Like, how to play guitar, but I learned from playing with this guy because I moved to the valley from New Mexico in like 2000. And immediately hooked up with Leo and his cousin Ed, and really? they already learned all the cover songs and all the things like when they were in high school, and they were already okay. writing the music. And They're already so, ahead of you, yeah. And so I, I'd been playing for a couple of years, and so like the least good guitar player usually ends up on bass, and that's <laughs> nice. Uh, so that's how you got the bass gig. Well, yeah, yeah. So well, that 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 evolved, right? Uh, so. So anyway, so I, I learned how to play playing original songs that they'd written, um, not yes. other people's stuff. And so I yeah. was the smoke on the water guitar player, you know, like the guy in Guitar Center that only knows the one riff in the song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> snippet, you know, in Guitar World or whatever. And so this guy, he put me through the ringer. He was like, okay, dude, we're going to learn fucking Slayer. The cool thing was, though, because like Slayer's one of my all time favorite bands, all those songs were like etched inside my heart. Yeah, my brother. And so, but, like, yeah. I just needed him to like show me, okay, it's here. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And it just comes out. And I'm like, yes, yes that's awesome. Uh, and so, anyway, he wanted to uh, shift to just do an original right away. Um, I was like, why don't we uh, or start another band? Actually, you wanted to change the band name. I did, and and I was like, you know what? Let's do both. Why why can't we do both? Who says those rules? And so we decided to uh, because we had to. It takes a lot, as you know, to have a band, right? Yes. Not just showing up and playing like there's like commitment. Things like we had to. Discussion. I'm like, bro, you realize we have to make two banners? Oh you shit! <laughs> yeah. Things like that. Down, yeah. uh, but um, so, so anyway, uh, we had an opportunity to uh, work on a movie soundtrack. I may uh, had a friend that lined Blood that tapes. up. Oh, yeah, Blood tapes. Blood tapes. Oh, very, and, and we were. And familiar. so here in this room, we composed uh, Inception, 
which is on the score for that movie, and um, Mercenary uh, and we tracked that political here cancer, to yeah. and Political Cancer. Like, and we had to right do it in a hurry. Studio. Remember, we had yeah. to do it in a hurry because yeah. this guy became real good friends with Rock and Roll James, which is the uh, local uh, Q ninety four point five rock station. Yeah, but uh, now he's PT. hashtag PVT. Yeah. Yes. Look, oh, man, fuck yeah. Us, no, Rock and Roll James, he's helped us out shingles in the past. I'm, I mean, he's given us some some really great opportunities that we never let him down. That's the thing, man. You get an opportunity, you can't let the guy down, and you know, who, who helps you out and promotes you. So, yeah, we had that opportunity, and we're like, fuck, we need to literally write two songs. Like, in what we did it in a month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause, well, yeah, because Rock and Sam Daly wanted us to uh, come on the radio, and they wanted us to have our own original music to play and we're like well shit we got to record something uh yeah. up beyond what uh, uh what we did so we got with josh lopez from immortal guardian uh, we we studios. Studios. shout out to josh and yes. uh, went and recorded our first ep and we put it out and uh, we kept doing the tribute thing at the same time because here's a really fucked up fact we can get paid more like four times more uh, four times more yep for, for doing a uh, then like as an original act. Now we're laddering up as an original band now, but man, it's a long way to the top. If sure. you want to rock. <laughs> That's uh, right. Some of the yeah. extra, your gas tank or you put gas in your tank. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, we did the EP and then people liked it. And then we it did came it. out on the radio. So that was a big yeah. first for us, big right? Deal, it's yeah. like, shit, we, we wrote some originals came out on the radio actually had some good traction like it wasn't just you know shit that they're like okay we're gonna tuck that away and never play it again no yeah. but they had it on their playlist yeah we people sold out, all the, yeah, we sold out all the CDs. Yeah. every single cd we made we sold it and people liked it and but here's the funny part everybody that was coming to the tribute shows they were like fuck yeah we started playing the originals when we were doing the slayer stuff and then um it all and, together, and then slowly yeah flipped the other way and yeah. then um and then COVID happened right so we put out our second ep possession people love that and then and then COVID the pandemic hit. happened and we couldn't do shit for a long time and then uh now we're back and we've been getting and do, and every show we do is a bigger case than the last one which is a great up, right it's, it's a next step know, up we made sure in, in inches, inches yeah but, in you know, inches, little increments, you know what? It's, it's always, it's always in the in, in the up direction and not in the yeah. Back. And uh, and, and kind of to kind of culminate and, and shrink the origin story back down to a manageable uh, situation. <laughs> oh yeah, we culminated that with playing in Austin for the first time what two weeks ago, uh, and we Come played and we played our first all original set. Oh shit, badass. Yes. Oh, so we got to we headlined at Come and Take It Live, and we didn't play any covers. No, and the important thing for us was like, we're gonna go. It's hard for me to go. Do. I was gonna say, wasn't it hard? Like oh, I was man, dude, to it's hard play for me to go. Angel of Death like, at the end. Let's just play one more song. Let's just let's Angel just of do Death. Angel of Death, and let's do it. Raining Blood. Yeah. Right. Fuck yeah. yeah. But you did. It was great. We didn't play no, any Slayer. It was, it was, it was all original. And you know what? Everybody liked it and had a great time. Hell yeah, man. So yes. Family so, joy. I'll tell you that's 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 you know me I've been mad with my my cover band Fistful of Metal for about at least 13 14 years and we've been trying to put some originals in the mix but because of people's schedules sometimes we only get like we're lucky to get one rehearsal in every 3 months. And at that time, it's like, hey, we so wanted to learn this one, this one, and this one. Let's learn those. So there's the always a reason and some, some kind of excuse. But I would love to have the turn of being the cover band that turns into the original band that along the way, you're throwing those originals in and people are eating it up as if they were fucking, you know, hit from one of the other bands that you're covering already. And what a success story right there. But I think it all started with you choosing the band with the timing right there with jeff hanneman passing away um it was the band at the right time and you seize the moment and because of the skill and the talent that y'all brought that y'all brought to the table and doing slayer justice got all that business afterwards you know, everybody called hey 
Everybody's in love with Slayer. Fuck yeah. They're stopped touring, all that shit. Please, we'll pay you. Come fucking play. We, we need Slayer. So I was gonna you, say the, hard, the hard part about that was that when they started, and I wasn't part of the original band, when they started, Slayer was still touring. You know, so it was very difficult. We The okay. market it was Slayer doesn't come down here. Slayer doesn't come here. Right. Slayer doesn't right. go there. Okay. Let's and play over here. Let's play over there. And then Slayer came down and we're like, oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but even then, even then, we still brought Slayer. Did. Oh, dude, it was awesome. Yeah, that, the that Slayer show was legendary. Here, it man. really at, was. At Bird Ogden Arena here in, in, in yeah. Edinburgh. And we had so much love in that building. Dude, we had people crazy. wearing our shirts to the Slayer crazy. show. Slayer oh, show. Yeah. yeah. In like 10 or 15 people wearing Overt Enemy shirts. Too. Oh, <laughs> shit. And I was like, holy shit. We had so hard, uh, dude. Fuck yeah. Um, uh, 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 I think they're uh, I Hollows of, of Rock and Roll James, uh, the, uh, uh, Snake and, and his brother, uh, oh, Jax, Jax, Jax. yeah, dude, PV, PVT crew, man, PVT Jax crew, Phoenix. another fucking prop to them. They bought us round drinks at that flare show, and yeah. she got so slammed that she went try to sneak backstage. <laughs> 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 In the band. That I'm did not, not happen. We lost track of her for like five minutes and was like, I what? went on an she adventure. She was getting ex escorted by security from the back. Like, you can't be back here, man. She oh, like, I'm, I'm Slayer L. I'm in the tribute band. We're, we're in a Slayer tribute. I don't know what that <laughs> It never happened. It was mm -hmm. fucking amazing. I don't man. remember it. It never happened. Yeah. I mean, see your, your own band shirts uh, of a tribute band that is a tribute to the band that you're going to see. It's just, it's just absolutely, uh, it's mind blowing. It's, it's amazing. It is, bro. And you got to earn that in this, in this, in this metal world. You got to earn that shit. You, you know, especially as a Slayer fan, if you're gonna be a Slayer tribute, you got to go fucking hard or go the fuck home, right? And right. You know, <laughs> that's you know, so we have. So I feel song. like you know, that song right there is a tr is is just a testament and almost uh, part of the philosophy that you've had since the very beginning that you started the slayer thing it's like you know what for right now slayer's a thing uh jeff hannon hannon died let's pay tribute to you know one of our favorite musicians or our favorite bands bring it together and it just grew into this fucking beast that 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 we have now and it's man with robert in the mix too it seems like everything's really started getting accelerated and um seems it definitely going level after level so before I get before I get carried away, let's bring it back to where we can kind of catch up where we are. Now we had Robert join the band and you guys started getting picking up more intensity. And now you're doing well, the last show you just had in Austin, which I got to give a shout out. Steven Gonzalez was at the Austin show. He said it was fucking badass. So yeah, that's, that's, that's Steve. Yeah, that's huge props, man, going up there and, and showing all of your own material right there. And, you know, I've been doing my research, listening to you guys, and your shit kicks ass, dude. You got some great stuff right there. And I think, you know, to be able to play Slayer, you got to have a, that level of talent is going to be up here. It's going to be up here. So applying what your talent is to your own music, it's going to be fucking quality. It's going to go fucking hard. So I got to give a real quick shout out to Steve Chef, uh, Chef yeah. Steve so he has done uh, uh, chef work for uh, Vinny Paul before he passed away. For real, okay. For uh, the likes of uh, the guys from Mudvayne, and wow. there's a few other bands that he's done some actual badass chef uh, uh, dinners. Yeah, he's got a cool work. YouTube. So uh, he does have TikTok a good, a chef. cool badass TikTok and YouTube. Chef Look Steven him up. Gonzalez, yeah. Chef Steven Gonzalez, man. So just gotta give props. Yeah, he, he came to so check it out in Austin. This was crazy to us. So we'd never played Austin before. Um, and people came from all over the place uh, from outside of Austin to come see us, uh, which wow. was awesome. talking like Steve came from like West Texas. He came from we Midland, people yeah. come from, from yeah. Coast and like the whole like surrounding area and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, all those things mean a lot to us, man. If it's like 30, 40 people, you know, hanging out, you know, that's even better, right? So, um, you know, it's it's good times, man. We're very blessed. Oh, yeah. Very blessed, dude. Oh, man. My, uh, thanks for showing the love, Stephen Gonzalez. And and definitely check out his his YouTube and his TikTok right there. I'm I'm not really a chef by trade, but I grew up. I've been I've been cooking for over 30 years, but I'm more of the supervisor guy now. So much love, Stephen. Hell yeah. You know, being in a band member, too, and having somebody cater to you and have it kick ass. 
is a luxury that few of us ever have the, the chance to to experience. So very oh. fucking cool. I'm glad you, you're going out there and showing the love to Overt Enemy. That is kick ass. I oh, want to fuck. give it a shout out. We got some other George Mad Cave greetings from uh I want to say Maine. Um, or is that Minnesota? Minnesota. 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 Okay, Minnesota. Okay, I gotta get my abbreviations right. So he's he's giving he's shouting out to Slayerella. And then I got my my friend Lady Selena's guitar player for our hometown uh, band Zombie King. They kick ass. Dude, so we love you at the show man. this weekend. Zombie King's fucking awesome. They Dance. are fucking awesome, dude. Hell Dance. yeah. So Dance. shout out to those guys. Jam with uh from, from from Corpus Christi. We need to get Zombie King down here to the Rio Grande. Hell yeah. Hell That's yeah. what's up. That for is sure. Tough. Try and make that happen, Eddie. Hell yeah. Hit up over an enemy. You guys would be a great pair together. Fuck yeah. You know what? Well, we played uh, we 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 played uh, House uh at House of Rock, House we of Rock for Soulfly with That's them. right. Oh shit, for the last run of Soulfly. Yeah, Who yeah. Was Three we dates, uh, Soulfly, uh, they did like a border thing, and we played Corpus, McAllen, and Laredo, Laredo. with yeah. them. Yeah. Soulfly's the best, man. Fucking Max. Oh, and no. it was in Dino. Max oh, and Dino. Yeah. 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 Max and Dino. So, yeah. Max was... so back before he got Mike uh, De, De Leon on. Uh, on Mike and Dino. Uh, filling Dino was in. filling in. Yeah. It was awesome. That's right. It was a run right after Rizzo left, right? Yeah. yeah, yep, yep, yep. That's yep. it. That's oh, that was a great show. Fuck yeah, it was good, dude. Okay, so let me backtrack. I want to I want to start asking about a little bit of each one of y'all's influences. So let's start with Robert. Robert, you know who inspired you to get on the axe? Was it a person or maybe a, a band or a particular musician? Or I, you know you also you know you did mention you you started on the bass. So now you're shredding on guitar. Was there maybe an artist or a band that? fired you up to want to start tearing it up yeah so uh so my, my dad played guitar okay and machinist and uh he crushed his hands uh and he's okay now but oh, uh shit. this was back when i was like maybe like 16 17 years old okay. uh, and uh anyway my dad's like super into like classic rock like Jimi hendrix you know like that that led zeppelin you know that kind of stuff yeah Yvonne, you know, big, big time SRV fan. Uh, and anyway, um, right around that time, uh, we hadn't talked in like many years. My parents were divorced and uh, we kind of got reacquainted. And, and uh, I indicated that I was thinking about buying a bass um, because yeah. I wanted, I felt a call like to learn how to play something. And yeah. the music store was like, well, you should start on bass. It's easier to learn, you know, whatever. And so, um, and so I mentioned that and then, uh, you know, he had recently hurt his hands. And so he gave me uh, one of his electric guitars. You remember that that Washburn KC40V that I had? That Hell, yeah, man. Hell uh, yeah. When I moved to the valley, somebody broke into my apartment and jacked all my stuff, uh, including that that guitar. So anyway, he had like oh, a shit. guitar. Uh, we drilled it out and flipped it upside down like Jimi Hendrix style and because I play lefty. And um, that's how I started playing. But as far as uh, um, musical like guitarists that uh, I was like super enthused by, uh, the top three is uh, Dimebag for sure. Uh, that that domination video in Moscow. Uh, yeah. Like, dude, yes. we Fuck out. yeah. It's like over and over and over, just watching. And then I meet this guy, and he could play it. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Like no for no badass. Um, so so for sure, you know, Dimebag a uh, big influence. Uh, but but Max uh, and Dino are Ooh, two okay influences as rhythm guitar players and, and James Hetfield uh, are, are kind of like the round out like the top three. But it's definitely yeah. Max, you know, and and and, and the Hetmeister, Papa Het. As, Papa uh, you know, Papa, yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right. All right. Well, Leo, let me ask you the same thing. So you got started playing bass and then you went to switched over to guitar. What was the first string instrument you played and, and who got you fired up to get on it? Wine before Overt Enemy. So like I've been in bands yeah. maybe the past 25 years. Um, I started um, back in uh, junior high jamming to Eddie fucking Van Halen. All right. Eddie Van Fuck Halen. Yeah. My first 
love when I heard him when when I heard him bust out uh, eruption, and then you really got me, and then all the solos and, and, and just the tapping and everything it was just like I was just in love with that sound, man, and I wanted to replicate yeah. every freaking show that I could, and so Eddie Van Halen is going to be number one for me. Um, uh, also, you know, I mean, you, you want to go down the line, you got Eddie Van Halen and then you got Steve fucking by. Yes. And Fuck yeah. Like the, the uh, devil, right? Uh, on guitar. So, it's, you know, Eddie Van Halen was like grandpa and then you had his son, Steve Vai. <laughs> then next yeah. to me was Dimebag. So you got those three guys and it was just, you know, I mean, I couldn't get enough of it. Hell I used yeah. to school like Bob was saying I used to skip school because we had the, the Pantera 3 video that had just come out. Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Watch it watch fucking it go. go. Watch no. it go. <laughs> we used to skip school to watch that shit. We get so oh, I can watch that shit endlessly. <laughs> I just get busted by my parents. What the fuck are you doing? And you know what's our excuse? Just jamming out. Right. <laughs> Eddie Van Halen to fucking Slayer, uh, when Slayer came out with Live Intrusion, the live video with oh, yeah. it, uh, and it was the, uh, what was the it? The Divine Intervention The Divine tour. Intervention Tour. Ooh. Oh, I mean, that's what hooked us on, I mean, that's what hooked me on the Slayer. Like, okay. time, that Divine Intervention freaking album is just phenomenal. And I know they didn't, they didn't like playing a lot of the songs from there, but I mean, just the creativity from that shit, you yes. know, helped me spawn what, what is, you know, over at enemy today. Fuck yeah. I have to give it to Eddie. I have to give it to Steve Vai. And then, and of course, Dimebag. Because, I mean, I saw Pantera like five, I think six times live. Yeah. And, and yeah. every time they got fucking better for me. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it's and like a band like Metallica. You don't get tired of seeing them. And when Metallica comes to town, that's the only place for guys like me and you to be. There ain't no, there's no reason that you're calling in to work, whatever the fuck is going on. You got mom watching the kids, you know, when Pantera is coming to town or even close within hours, that's the place to fucking be. There ain't nothing else. Worth like, no, and I'm going to go a step further and name a name a fourth. And it was okay. going to be Kirk Hammett was going to be number four. Kirk, Kirk hey. Hammett. I mean, I love Metallica. The, the, yeah. freaking, uh, the Justice for All album took me by, I mean, just people talk, you know, that Metallica kind of fell off. They never fell off. Haters. Hell yeah. I love that. Yeah, I love all, that. Fuck yeah. Great. All their albums were 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 targeted at, at audiences and they scored and they won. And they're still fucking yes. winning. Like the all-time best metal band of all time. So. Agreed. Definitely, man. You know, that's the thing about, you know, artists that, like, like a Metallica, like the Rolling Stones, bands that have put out 20 albums, you know, that album is just a, a snapshot of where they are at that at that life in their life at that time, and Absolutely. yeah, they're shooting for different genres. They're they're into different music. They're trying to stay ahead of music. Metallica's always been the they've always been leaps above every everybody else, and they just had a way of knowing what the next best thing was going to be. I feel like when they did Load, um, they kind of created new metal. You know, they made it all right. For and bands I, like that, like movie. Godsmack and everybody else to follow suit. When I first heard it, it I almost shit my pants because the way that I saw Metallica was thrash metal all the way. So yeah. like the Black Album was kind of okay. It was a little bit more commercial, but then you get the Load Album and it's like, what do you take of it? It's like, oh shit, it's a whole new fucking shakeup. But like, yeah. you go back and you listen to it and you listen to the work they put in. It's like. They could, they could, they could, they could basically write anything they want, and yeah. it's good. it could be hip hop or pop. They'd still do the best of, of what it is. So that's why I was like, "Fuck!" I love you know, "Kill 'Em All," "Ride the Fucking Lightning," you know, "Master of Fucking Puppets." I mean, hard, grainy thrash metal yes. solos. But then you go and and you hit load, and it's like, "Holy shit! This is more class." Yeah. This has not lot to I mean, man. until it sleeps, you know, fucking the the house that Jack built. I mean, all those two songs, by two by yeah. fuck or it ain't my bitch. I love those fucking jams. I love it. I love the, the outlaw torn. Like yeah. what the fuck? And we had like these arguments 
amongst ourselves and between bands. <laughs> fuck the band. No, fuck, you know, unfuck the band. <laughs> now you go back and listen, it's like, they could. And it's just a different onda, you know? They could do yeah. it. Fuck they they just turned to. the channel to corrosion and conformity exactly. and clutch like the same like wavelength that they're like those guys Fucking were on and, exactly like, uh -huh. and like those kinds of bands that were doing more like blues based. You, you know, know, we're trying stuff. to kind of emulate that. Like, I don't want to be stuck to some. Our new album of... sounds just like Load. Steroids with a freaking you know an eight an eight, an eight ball of go, what? <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to we have the one, the, the, man, the best thing was the first EP. That's it. That was it. Everything <laughs> else sucked after that, right? <laughs> Who the underground, right when they were underground after that? Fuck them. Right. What about Laura? No, we're getting the Laura, but those are, those are some fucking bass guitar players. And throwing Kirk in at the very end, you know, when I think of Kirk, I always think of that movie. Um, what is it? Thrash or be thrash, or maybe it's um, murder in the front row. But it's where, uh, where um, fucking Gary's giving props. He goes, man, Kurt showed me how to play guitar. He showed me how to pick, showed me how to hold a pick. And, you know, Kurt, you know, when I see those old videos, the history, the history always portrays Kirk as being the, like the catalyst that kind of brought them together. That was bringing the, the, uh, the Pat Travers to the party. That was bringing these other, you know, heavy guitar players and UFO, and before you, it, all that shit was contagious. And uh, maybe it, it just appeared to me like he was like that one thing that kind of was the seed in the little clique that just ended up turning into this, you know, global worldwide phenomenon. You know, forty five years later. Fucking but man, yes, every, every band's like that. Like uh, if you look at most of the like the history of like really good acts it's normally when they get like that last key member or two uh that like complete that the lineup that starts doing shit you know what i mean yeah really what matters yeah to your point kirk hammett was that guy i mean he was to think he started yeah. the next is still going right and yeah then, Solo EP is really cool too, man. Yeah. Totally different vibe, you know, from from Metallica. I I read an interview with him a while back, and he was talking about how he's really more interested in uh, being an improvisational soloist than composing. Uh, and so he's like, yeah, mm. solos I got to kind of play them the same every night, but I really try to. I'm just trying to like rip like every yeah. night on other stuff, and sometimes it works out, and sometimes. It's fucking disaster, but that's, what's, <laughs> that's what's you know, fun, and man. I'm like, hell yeah, that's so awesome, man. It's a good mentality to have. That's the fun part about it. Hell yeah. Laura, so tell me about the music background. What got you into being a musician and what, what instruments can you play? So uh, my background is a little bit different from the guys. I grew up listening to country. Okay. So, yeah. George Strait. Wait, 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 wait. Strait, Randy Level Travis. the playing field. I also we I think we all grew think, up listening, yeah. yeah grew up listening to country same music. here yeah we're it we're in Texas from, hell yeah it's gonna happen back in the early nineties so like yeah. that so, that's our our, our you know but our see then when cool this is where we differ when K Frog you know branched off and turned into the rock station I was not allowed to listen to it I listened to country. So then I had K-Tex, you know, I listened to K-Tex. So I listened to a lot of the Judds. I listened to a lot of uh, Tammy Wynette. I listened to a lot of Willie Nelson. I listened to a lot of country stuff. I always found myself drawn to the bass. I did, I did, even when I was little. I mean, we would go to weddings, you know, at the Hano Music, I always found myself drawn to the bass. Anyway, wow. junior high rolls around and my best friend's like, hey, you need to hear this. And she gave me her Walkman, her headphones, you know, it was Metallica. I had never heard Metallica. I was like, what is this? Yeah. So I had a Cliff Burton, Jason Newstead cut my teeth on the bass. They did. Wow. That's Kick where ass. I started. And then once I started listening to Metallica, I was like, oh, well, what's this? Oh, well, what's that? And then I started listening to Nirvana and I started listening to all these other bands. And then I discovered Pantera and Rex and uh -huh. Brass. And that's where yeah. I just, like, okay. And then she met mine. And then I met him. <laughs> yeah. Then I met him, and it was all done. <laughs> so we met when we were sixteen. Wow. So we kind of, yeah, kind of just you know, 
grew together with the whole music scene and like I showed yeah. her she showed me new shit and then I tried to buy her a bass one time and then one of my asshole friends stole it. It happened. You know, he, was, he was on a binge and oh, shit. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Some good stories though. Right? Metallica wow. and then Rex Brown and then of course Lemmy because Lemmy, the- that's right. I love Fuck it. Yeah. No. Once we started karaoke and I learned, oh, I can play Motorhead. Oh, I can sing Motorhead. Let's do this. You know? And oh shit. So how many years you've been on the on, on the bass now? Ooh, uh, 12, 14 years ish. Well, no. yeah. I started when I turned 30. I'm 42. No. Okay. 12 years. 12 years. Wow, that's badass. No, I've always I wanted to play bass too. I picked up a bass during COVID. You know, just try and pick it up to learn something new to keep my keep myself acu- occupied. And I love the bass, and, and and I play a little guitar as well. But I'm a front man through and through, and I I couldn't do the Tom Mariah because I want I, I got to be running. I'm more of I'm more like the old school feel for Vogel display of power, where he's running around, not the reinventing the steel feel, where he was kind of <laughs> like you know <laughs> not, where where he had all the back problems. And, and much respect, I love Phil. Fucking love fucking Phil. And, you know, I feel for him because he gave so much in those early years. He jacked himself up. The, his body, his back, and all that shit. And music will do that to you. You know, I, I saw that. I went to go see um, Phil Collins. You know, Phil Collins. Um, and I, yeah, he's a badass motherfucker on drums. But he walked out there with a fucking and a walker. And he sat down and he performed. And I thought to myself, holy shit. And it's because... The years of, of that posture playing drums fucked up his back, and it it, it depends on how you. It, it really matters how you play, and that really really made me wake the fuck up. Like, damn, holy shit, he's in a bad spot. But much props to him. He's still a kick ass drummer. He sounded great vocally, but his son is now on the kit. And that night, his son did a drum solo. He did a drum solo and the percussionist, and they did a three ensemble thing. Bad Fucking ass. huge. Yeah, man, super huge. So, you know what? I, I just love that that we were being able to inspired by all these great young acts. You know what I mean? Lori getting into that 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 um that cliff and then and giving love to Jason. You know, yeah, Jason, he doesn't always get the love. But just do one without the other. I yeah. mean, they you both can't. they did. Yeah. And and they're gonna start on an Iron Maiden. I mean, Dude, she's a huge Jason's backup fan. vocals too, man. Or he held, he held down some lead vocals sometimes too. Have you seen Newstead by himself? Oh yeah, he some yeah. Good yeah. Stuff. He's he's a beast. Beast. We saw Newstead. We saw Newstead live. Um, yeah, we saw Hell yeah, and yeah. Megadeth. That's right. Fuck yeah. I remember oh. that he did like um, Megadeth had that had their own tour, like almost like a Tattoo the Earth or Ozfest, and. They I had, a, I want to say, Symphony X and, and maybe, I, I think they did it two years, right? And Newstead opened up one of those years, and I think Device. Uh, I, don't know this guy device. I don't remember who else. No, it was, it was, oh. you're right. Yeah. It was Newstead, it was Device with Draymond from uh, yeah, Disturbed. From Disturb. Yeah. Hell yeah, and then it was uh, Megadeth. Megadeth. Yeah. yeah. Much man, I love Newstead. I, I love the fact that he had enough balls to leave the biggest band in the world. What the fuck? You know, that's, that's that really goes to show that you know he he's um he's had it. He's had it. He's a he's a class act too. Like yeah, I yeah he is. An interview with him where he goes off. That that dude is exudes nothing but positivity into the world, <laughs> and I think that that's a great way to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Hell yeah. Well, I love all your influences. Now let's start back at you, Rob, and tell me what was your first concert? Ooh, first concert, Edge Fest in seventh grade. Uh, it was an alternative uh, music festival in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where, where I live. And uh, it was, I'm talking about like the same year. Well, it's the seventh grade. I would have been 13, so 1993. Yeah. So that was when, like, um, all the main big alternative stuff was going on. Uh, uh, but I, it was uh, bands like Goldfinger and okay. uh That same year, I, I think I saw uh, I saw 
Bush and No Doubt when they toured together when I think Gavin Rossi and Gwen Stefani like hooked up on that tour. And, yeah. And, yeah. Fun wow. pop. Okay. Uh, but, but yeah, that's Bro, that was my Bro. first thing. And then my first metal show was Ministry, dude. The same Ooh, year. Ministry I went bad. on a run. I went on a run where I was able to win. I, I, I won concert tickets from the, the, the rock station over yeah. there. Like four or five shows in a row. What? Oh I shit! Shit since not a raffle or a contest or anything. I burnt flamed out in seventh eighth grade with winning <laughs> things, uh, but I got oh, to go yeah. see ministry in the Jesus Lizard. Uh, I crazy Jesus Lizard uh, for you know just on my driver's license drove myself to that show and everything. So yeah. you know, that was awesome. I think that was like ninety six somewhere around there. But yeah, that was. Uh, the first metal show. Very yeah. cool. Hell yeah. And I'm thinking that ministry could have been mine is a terrible thing to taste. Was it that one? I think so. Whenever the out is it that album that's got Lay Lady Lay on it, the cover? Ooh, Lay 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 Lay. I think Lay 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 is the one that's got, I think that might be Filth Pig. Yeah. Okay. So I think it was when Filth Pig came out because uh, they were, that. that was like the song they were playing on the radio. Yes. Uh, over there Fuck, yeah oh yeah. well because you mentioned ministry i gotta yeah. mention uh i got to, i went to the i guess it was the second Lollapalooza, and that's where i first saw ministry and i became a fucking lifelong fan that was the psalm 69 tour yeah. and they had this fucking massive backdrop and i was tripping balls man it was amazing and <laughs> it, it tripping so hard i missed Soundgarden and ice cube because i was just focus on the freak show that they had there <laughs> and i was like what the fuck and i was like hey i forgot i'm here at a fucking concert by the way ministry's playing so yeah ministry is fucking amazing i love those guys it what blew me away is that is that when i was able to hear them playing like in uh mine is a terrible thing to taste uh that they could play with a live band i mean mm -hmm. mike skate should be able to pick that fast the drummer being able to keep up with the fucking digital drums like what the fuck yeah. all the uh yeah. The, the weird part about that particular show, too, that was also my first recollection of hearing Johnny Cash. Oh, was, shit. Was wow. That was, okay. That was, before they came on stage, they played probably five Johnny Cash songs in a row, like in between the bands, you know. So it was the Jesus Lizard. Where I was like, that's fucking crazy. I'd never seen anything like the front guy was just nuts. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and then johnny cash for like 30 minutes in between <laughs> uh, and i never heard but my stepdad cl super classic rock guy so i grew up on like rush boston you know yeah. uh, and it's like that ozzy you know old school uh -huh. ozzy stuff. so johnny cash was that something that i'd heard uh until that show so it was my first metal show but it's also the first time i heard johnny cash which is crazy. interesting choice of 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 uh opening music for them to set the tone with right there at Johnny Cash. And that always gives me, I always get a laugh whenever a band chooses their opening music and it's something kind of off the wall like that. And it just kind of shows the love that they have and it, it fires them up and whatever works fucking works for me, man. It, it turns me on uh, to something I probably wouldn't have heard, heard before. And uh, just so all of this, that's right. <laughs> you know, I, I, because I want to finish the sentence I was going to think of. I saw Tool and they played over at the Verizon Wireless Center and they had a band open up for them. It, uh, it really wasn't a band. I guess it was just one artist. But Tool was, I love the fuck out of Tool, but they always seem to bring somebody off the wall that, that needs exposure. Don't get me wrong. They need the exposure and they were badass artists. But I want to see somebody like Soundgarden open for Tool or somebody else that's going to be maybe a little closer to that genre. But I gotta give them props because they 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 bring up somebody that needs the exposure. So I gotta give them props. But goddamn, as record labels shoot though, man. Like so it's like whoever the booking agency. It's a booking yeah. agency, right? So it's like whoever's opening for you. It's it's not up to the band. It's up to you know whoever's booking the shows and well, shit. So, sometimes it sometimes. like depends on the situation. But like I saw, um, uh, did you see Tool when they played at a uh, uh, American Bank Center? Not this last time, but. Maybe. I see them both. Oh, okay, both times. So you yeah. saw them with that. 10,000 days? Yeah when, yeah, when King's X opened for them. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, I, I just think, you know, when, when you're a band like Tool, when you're a band like Slayer and Slipknot, 
you get to pick who the fuck you want. You know, yeah. I, I think so. And luckily for a band like Tool, you don't even have to have an album. You just go on tour and you're selling out wherever the fuck you go. So exactly. I spent my wife to see Tool. She was bored to death. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, this is awesome. You know, and she's like, this is so this is, uh, Not really. <laughs> Anyway, let's leave Tool in the background, man. Let's keep talking about some hard shit. So, um, right there, we're coming to you now. Luyo, tell me what your first concert was. My first big, I think, metal rock show was was when I went to see Candlebox at the Villarreal. And we had this place called the Villarreal here. And, uh, yeah, I'm familiar Nano. with it. Okay, you know who Nano is, right? I'm not familiar with with necessarily a lot of the guys that run it, but I. Nano was a promoter, and I, it was, he, is a promoter. he is a promoter, he is a promoter still. Promoter, yeah. but he was bringing down like these crazy acts, he, dude. He brought down Metallica, Metallica, like, Pantera, like, 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 Slayer. I mean, he he's the man. Yeah, really, but he also brought down a lot of huge Tejano acts too. Okay, so, like, Gala, Kiss. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, not not Kiss. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 Grupo Mans, I mean, you target Intocable, so yeah. he's bringing down these huge acts. So, when I saw Candlebox, um, you know, uh, coinciding with what Rob was talking about, um, I saw them the grunge era, it was the grunge era, right? For sure. So, uh, it, it was Candlebox, and then from there, it was all downhill, man. I did see that ministry tour, but here in the valley. All right, uh, with the Jesus Lizard as well. Oh, you did? That's yeah, so cool. yeah. Uh, -huh. uh, uh, I saw a ton of bands, man. Uh, uh, Monster Magnet, fucking uh, Push Monkey, freaking uh, I mean, you name them. I, I've yeah. seen, I remember how you've been to Push Monkey, you were, like, yeah, man, Push Monkey was like, bad, Push man. Monkey, and I'm like, who the fuck's I was Push big Monkey? on them too, <laughs> man. Hell yeah, man. CD got to see, uh, uh you know, Megadeth back in the in, in the old days when he when he turned his back on uh, McAllen. <laughs> no, what? I was at that show. I was at that show. He got all pissed off, and he's like, "If y'all don't stop fucking around, we're gonna leave." And <laughs> sure enough, he made a he made a, a an interview where he's like, "Fuck McAllen, we're never going back." The sad part is though, no, is that, I think I know who did it. Yeah. Oh man, damn! How about that? Oh and shit. Clown so brings him down. We're not doxing anybody on this podcast, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and then, and then I got a. I mean, it was almost immediately after Candlebox. I want to say like two big shows later, I got to see Pantera for the first time, and it was Fuck the yeah. uh, a Far Beyond Driven album, and it was just. Oh, I mean that show blew my ass away, me. and then after that, I was like, I got to see him again. So then it was like, you know, I saw that yeah. one. 101 proof and then i saw reinventing the steel in San Antonio with black sabbath and i mean i love sabbath and i love i mean i love sabbath so when i went to see pantera and sabbath together it was just it was at the alamo oh, dome San Antonio. Tour, yeah. yeah and it was just like it was just like a, a holy moment for me it's yeah holy for me uh, uh, it's well, hard to get any better than that lineup right there. Those two right there. Holy uh, shit! And, and um, can you imagine the, all the old Sabbath fans that had never heard Pantera before they got their faces <laughs> right? Oh no shit! Wow. Another, another good one that I saw with Ministry was KMFDM. I don't KMFDM. know if you ever heard of yeah. KMFDM. Hell yeah! They came with Ministry. It was like holy shit! It's like the industrial metal. Right, perfect, so perfect billing right there. Three, and then you had prong. We saw prong too. Uh, yeah. just like fuck yeah, man. That's what you need. You need got like to prodigy see, to run that. Got to out. see An prodigy. anthrax as well. Was brought down. Um, I didn't get to see the Metallica one, but that was back in the early eighties. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. so I, was, I was like early nineties when 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 Candlebox was coming down. But man, we we got to to see the uh, the Tattoo the Earth tour. Slip yeah. Slayer. Yeah, Slayer. I moved here. Fucking uh, Eight Breed and Seven Dust. The down. Uh, System of a Down. That yes. was my first concert. Yeah, fuck that yeah. That was my first that, big concert. What was another one? Uh, uh, what, Laura, that was your first concert? That was my first concert. Tattoo, Tattoo the, the Earth. Earth. 
I took her to that Yeah. I, I grew hey, up badass. In a very conservative family. I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things. I was the oldest. I was the only girl. I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things. Tattoo the earth. I had graduated high school already. I was like, yes, let's go. Let's do this. And my dad was like, you're taking your baby brother. <laughs> Steven Gonzalez went with us to Tattoo the Earth. Shows oh, shit. It's like, it, all right, he, he's coming then. He's I, coming, he went. I took her to those concerts, by the yeah. way. Yeah. She to got, go. to, two yeah. You went got to see Slayer yeah. calls, Mud Monkeys. I mean, like the whole thing. It was it was a thing. Fuck yeah. That is bad. I, I love those concerts, man. It reminds me, you know, because I went to... I, it sounds like me and you, Leo, uh, we didn't miss a concert. Yeah. Right? If they're coming, it's like, well, of course we're going to be there. What the fuck? Metallica, Megadeth, anybody, Metal, Prong, Sepultura, we're going. It just, there ain't no offense. That's a bunch about it. Do you remember uh, uh, Sounds of the Underground at Concrete Street? Yes. That was one. Strapping fuck, young yeah. That's why fucking out. Yes, dude. I was blessed enough to have a friend, uh, a good friend of mine, Casey Lane, who books the bands over here at the House of Rock. He's the owner of House of Rock. And, and at that time, he was booking for uh, Concrete Street. And so it was 2005. It was the first uh, uh, Sound the Underground. He got us to open up my band, Kilimora. I got to hang with with uh, fucking George Corpse Grinder cooking barbecue before the Cannibal Corpse set. Um, uh, got to hang out with Trevor and the guys from Black Dahlia Murder. Um, yeah. uh, didn't really get a chance to see the Inflames guys, but uh, as they lay dying, I uh, became good friends with Nick, Nick Hippa. And uh, what it was cool is at the end of the night, we had two trailers, the, the trailer that partied and the trailer that didn't party. So the guys from Trivian, except for the drummer, the drummer was in our trailer where all the partying was going on with Gore and the Slaves and fucking the guys from Terra. And George wasn't really getting shit faced, but he was playing cards and kind of just sharing stories with us all night. But the drummer from Trivian, he was in the back with like three chicks. And everyone was like, who's, who's in the back? Hey, what's his name? It's like, what the fuck? But the other trailer had the other guys. Um, who we love, Matt Heafy, you know, from Trivium. So all that, that was the straight edge one. And uh, it was just one of the best nights of my life, man. It was incredible. Sounds the underground. Thank you, Casey, for making it possible. But let's get back to some more over at en Enemy. So we got to the first concerts for you guys. So now I want to ask y'all, um, who writes the music and who's writing the lyrics for y'all? We all write together. Yeah, we do write together. Um, I do most of the guitar work, so all guitar work is mostly m my stuff. Okay. Uh, 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 I want to say it's like, more like it's more like eighty twenty. Right. So right. he 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 writes like eighty percent of the riffs. I write twenty percent of the riffs, and then I make him rearrange like two thirds of the eighty percent. Yeah. Uh, okay. I have to fucking wrestle. I'm like, dude, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> In fact, we drink a twelve pack, and we have to like go fisticuffs for you know. <laughs> so. is you'll post a riff. Hey, look, look, Rob, look what I wrote. Did it, and you'll play it, you know, on Facebook Messenger, and then this one's like. Yeah, but play it like do 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 and they they do the you gotta whole rearrange thing, it. Thing. So put this ending part at the beginning, and then the middle part. I just want you to think that. And if that you're out. not a guitarist, you won't get. And we'll what add it later, and I'm like, hey, hey, slow down. And so but by the time no. we get to practice, they have it, and they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> so you were talking about da 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 da. -da. Yeah, look, yeah. Do -do 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 -do, and they do it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you guys. So so they got a language of their own. The yeah, most of the bass, guitar, and and guitar work, and some of the drums is mostly me. Uh, lyric, I gotta give it up to Rob. Rob he does helps, a lot of lyrics. He does like 60, 60, 40 of the lyrics. All right. Uh, I was timing, I'm like, I don't fucking like that shit. Throw that shit away. So <laughs> it's like, check each other. It's like checking balances. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's how it is. Cool. So it's mostly Rob and I that write just the majority of everything. Yeah, right here in this room. Oh, right. then, hey, very cool. I'll go in and say no. And Laura will come in and be like, really? Are you fucking kidding me? You need to ref ref refine this or reform this so I can fucking play this. This is bullshit. I'm like, okay. Where's the All one? Right. Where's right. the one? <laughs> hey, I like that. You get the, you, you guys put it together. She comes in and has, has that third set of, set of ears and like, yeah, hey, you know what? Exactly. Here's what you do. You gotta do that. I like that. Hell yes. You know, so I'm like, wait, I'm she, very she, systematic. She will let yeah. us get are up our own <laughs> guitarist, you know. Don't go, so, go from no, 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 no. We go down that fucking rabbit hole and she had to put us in check. So yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Hell yeah. I like the collaboration like that. 
and a lot of the times, you know, it's it's one guy always writing the guitar and the singer's always writing the lyrics, you know, typically like that. But it it kind of sh- it, it does show the great chemistry that you guys got together with each other. Because if you don't have that kind of good chemistry where you can kind of, you know, say, that sucks, bro. I know we can do better than that. Or, you know what, I don't, we should play that a little longer, dude. We're not letting that fucking really rock. Let it groove a little longer. If you're not comfortable with you, with, with who you're working with, that conversation is never had. And the music has never created that fucking badass that you know that you can already hear. So much props. I'm glad you're making it happen. What about the drums? The Sal already come in with... with- I was going to say, Saul was a great addition to everything because we had already been playing for a very long time and we already had our chemistry, right? And so then Saul just kind of slid in and it was like, oh, here I am. And yeah. he fits in that, in that peg that, yeah. that, yeah. Uh, so we yeah. already, yeah, we already had our chemistry and he just, he just kind of joined us. Like, so you know, Leo, seamlessly. Leo plays drums. Awesome. Uh, this dude is multi-talented, right? So sings, plays wailing, rip your face off lead guitar, can write excellent, you know, uh, Fuck riffs yeah. and all that. And then he's, he can he's play drums. He's too. actually played drums. Uh, in uh, Heaven Holocaust, right? Was, uh, Holocaust. was, it, was it, so, oh, a drummer for this band, yeah. Heaven Holocaust. So, the longest song. yeah, this, oh, yeah. Be, you know the whole the, the whole thing. Uh, and so, uh, kind of like he's multi instrumentalist, but I've got like p- producer mind. Like I can see okay. like in my head when I hear things. It's weird. Uh, yeah. And, why i'm always rearranging shit because i can see it like i hear it and i'm like okay hey what if this was like that and you know and, and yeah. anyway so um typically what will happen is they'll have an idea more or less like hey i think the drum should go like this and then um we'll lay it out like in uh, in software or something like that uh or maybe we write to a loop sometimes right where we use like the superior drummer and we'll just say and that's like we did that with this new album uh where we just got on there and you guys tried to find, yeah. yeah we just guys tried to find course. like a a, a a drum riff to like groove along to and then just try to write something and, as then, a Saul. Yeah. and, and then we gave, gave it to Saul and we're like here's kind of what we're thinking but totally make your own stuff and so right. when Saul came in he had a big job because he had to learn all of our original stuff he had to learn our whole slayer set plus he had to write all the drums for the new album he came in in november wow. in march and we were also recording for our newest yeah. album at the same time so he had to do everything at the yeah. same time and like to give i mean i love props our old drummer he man was having to fill some big shoes because i'm <laughs> Fucking amazing! He uh, is a beast. he wrote the first two releases with us, which is the uh, insurrection, which yeah. is uh, uh, yeah possession. Well, I mean, I'm talking about the song. So, so, Inception. so Inception was the first one with uh, political cancer Mercenary. and mercenary, and then our possession uh, release was possession, uh, uh, blood god, blood god. Yes. And and uh, um, in the end, we died. So like, and so yeah. Okay. And that bitch and cover of that Don they sleep that they can't. And that bitch and cover, know. yeah, was all Jaime Ayala. I gotta give props to my brother. I love him a lot. Um, he's like ten or fifteen years my senior, so and he still looks younger than my ass. So he's fucking amazing looking right now. Oh, uh, good, badass. All I, right. I came in. He just was like, "All right, tell me what the fuck I need to do to be in this band." Exactly. All right. I need to do to be in this band. I'll do it. And so far, he hasn't let us down, man. Yeah, he's exceeded expectations. He's he's he's, he's, he's a bad. Not ass only is he a badass drummer, he's a really really nice guy. He's, he's a great awesome. family man. He he's out. He's his out daughter with his daughter had, right now. Yeah, yeah. his daughter had family a volleyball man. match today. So you know, we're definitely a family first band, and then, uh, you know, and, and God and and all that first, and then. Uh, band and work you know kind of yes oh, take yeah. care of the priorities i know what you mean hell yeah big props to you sal i, I hope to meet you when, when you when you guys come over here on august 30th right yeah august 30th yes i make sure i get that date right okay good well okay so we're talking about those eps you know the inception and the possession and i'm glad you mentioned a lot of the tracks that are on there because it seems like that kind of grew in 
to the Inception X Possession album, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it all came together right there. And I know there's some extra tracks because, you know, I know uh, Pray for Death isn't on one of those two EPs, right? Yeah. And it's on possession. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's on possession. Okay. That's a banger, dude. Cause I mean, like, I love possession. I love Blood God. I love Pray for Death. Um, they fucking they really stand out to me, those ones especially. And um how did you choose at Dawn They Sleep when you had all these covers of Slayer to choose? Why at Dawn They Sleep? And I say that because that's my fucking favorite song from Slayer. And that's like, wow, dude, that's well, it's a thought, banger. And the way y'all you know execute that one is remember when we fucking thought about heavy. It. We, like we said, what song do we want to do, and like at the same time, and Don they sleep. Yeah, the reason Damn. why <laughs> was because we Bad. thought it was such a killer song, yeah, that it had the recognition that it deserved. Yeah, and we were like, you know what? If we cover this fucking jam, it's so demonic. It has such a badass wing yeah. to it. It's got that that off tempo. Yeah. And then it, you know, it's talking about fucking vampires and then, you know, (laughs) in my mind, I was like, this song should have been aggressive, you know, should have been produced better. And so we're like, yeah, let's just, let's do the, the, the B side song and make it an A side song. Fuck yes. I mean, I'm not not taking anything away from the way Slayer did it. But like that's our song now. When we produce, yeah, when we produce, <laughs> we're, we're the captain. Yes. <laughs> when we produce the fuck out of it, we literally produce the fuck out of it. I mean, when we were when we were uh, in the studio putting it together, we literally had the Slayer bass track underneath, and we were writing meticulous, exa- dude. Exact. We're, yeah, we didn't want to like get exact not, not to what they a, had. A, we didn't want to have a note wrong. It wasn't yeah. like our interpretation of that yeah. song. I know you it's probably heard of like covers it. of and it's kind of like it. No. no. No, we wanted to make it that's right. it. This, that's it. it. This is what it. Did, but and, with and like modern dead on balls production. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, it was fun. And so yeah, it came out fucking amazing. And Fuck yeah. Rob over here fucking had the hindsight to put it up uh, uh to pitch it towards the Sirius XM guys and yeah and, we're still getting airplay on that. And the Thank, you, Scotty. Thank, you, Scotty. Thank you, Scotty. Sean the Sean Butcher. The Butcher. Fuck the Sean yeah. the Butcher and, 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 and fucking Jose, Jose Mangan. Mangan. Yeah. Love Thank, you. Thank you. Much Thank you. props, dude. Hell yeah. Well, the, as, as as solid and as fucking crushing as, as that cover is, I'm glad you recorded it and put it out. And you put it out there for Sirius XM. And it's definitely worthy. And I'm glad they're fucking putting it out there because we're getting some Texas love out there. Some over enemy love out there on Sirius XM. That's funny, great. Funny thing about that EP possession, Tony, is all of those songs were actually written right around the same time as the as the first EP. And we were gonna record a full length album, but we didn't have time. And we had to get music done. And so yeah. uh, um it was like, well, let's do let's record, you know, two songs um uh, and have something that's yeah. complete and finished and then we went back in and that's why you see like 2017 2018 is those were kind of from like the same time period and we went back in and kind of finished it and everything and then we ended up um what what happened was uh we sold out of all of the original cds that we made and yeah. uh, and during the pandemic you know we couldn't do anything right and so we decided you know what why don't we put them together and do a re-release and put out put out a vinyl record? And so uh, we have all of that together. Uh, that era the of the possession. band is on the Inception Possession yeah. Uh, yeah. album. And there's is, a bunch uh, of outtake songs down there too. So mm-hmm. like the you know the the early recordings and then us instrumental. Yeah, we did the whole <laughs> the, the whole thing that's <laughs> got like all the demos, you know. Fuck yes. Uh, that is awesome. What a badass packaging. Do you sell the albums whenever you're doing live, or do you have to go to a website to go get them? Vinyls for sale. One of the few bands you'll see that carries vinyl around with them. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. You can get it at over at enemy.com too, anytime. Heck yeah. The one thing that I'm really proud of is like when I first talked to these guys about producing albums, I wanted to follow like a, a storyline. So you're starting with 
right? You're starting with with Inception. So what is Inception yeah. like? The beginning of something. And yeah, then you, it's instrumental. Yeah. Well, like if you're a demon, you know, the Inception is the beginning of your of your your fall, and then when you're possessed, you're possessed by the demon. So we got Inception, we got possession, and then the next release is going to be direction. So it's like the fight within yourself, right? Yeah. Like well, we're trying to follow like a little theme here, and then like the, our next release, you know, I'm not trying to give it out, but it's going to be resurrection, right? So you got deception, possession. Oh shit! Not giving it out, you know, but I'm not going to give it out, but here it is. <laughs> but I love it. I love the. I love the uh, the theme, that big yeah. picture of that man. That's I awesome, man. Anything that rhymes, we might just <laughs> keep going down the road. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <You know. Yeah. laughs> Well, what I like also, our last, our last album is going to be called Reflection. <laughs> oh, how appropriate! <laughs> well, how about let's talk about that live album, man? The Thunder in the Hill Country official live. Oh, what man. made you want to do it at that festival? Did Did you plan it out? Did you Did you want to do a live album? You just didn't know where to do it. So we we record every show. Uh, we have a in ear monitor rig uh, that Ooh. we're able to record every rehearsal uh every show we do we listen back like we, we game film we, we call play, it game yeah. filming so like a after a practice like we'll mix it down and listen back and be like oh yeah you fucked up there or you're off key there you know or no that was pretty good you More know wrong. Yeah. yeah wrong string dude wrong string. Hello. Uh, you know all of those things so anyway um we got booked for uh thunder in the hill country we we're the first metal band uh, to to get books to play that biker rally. So shout out to 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 those guys for for booking us and and we we appreciated the opportunity. And so yeah, we got to go to Bandera and uh, uh, set up our gear and played right as the sun was setting, like frying us like right in the face. Uh, and it was super it was super fun. And that was Saul's first gig with the band. That was what? so what here yeah. on there, not edited. You know, we trimmed the the banter in between the songs. Yeah, which on the uh, and and so uh, yeah, that's uh, Soul's first gig. It's a moment in time, and uh, we listened back to it afterward, and we're like, "That's not bad. That's pretty good. We barely <laughs> fucked up. Okay, yeah. cool." Uh, <clears throat> Josh was busy. He was on tour, and so uh, our friend uh, Rob Canales. Uh, from Studios. Unholy Desecration Red and uh, Pantheon, uh, Red Red Pantheon. Barn Studios, uh, he he mixed it for yeah. us, and uh, we just decided to put it out as a live album, kind of as a uh, in between kind of thing. I don't know, like like I said, we're not following rules. He yeah. says we can't put out a live album if we want to before yeah. we put out our first official, you know, kiss <laughs> did that right? But right. Like, well, well, I like mean, a live album you got to think about it like. Uh, this newer album, Insurrection, has been in the works for almost like four years, four or five yeah. years. Now. Yeah, because we, we, yeah. so we had to do something. I didn't want to, you know, be, you know, one of those bands that are like, yeah, we're gonna be there eventually, because people will start to get tired of our of our lip, you know. So it's like, okay, you want to hear us fucking play live? This is what we do. Yeah. This yeah. is our, this is our fucking Slayer tribute show, our last big push. For that and that was it that was i think our last that was gig. the last tribute show that was the last yeah. gig we ever did yeah. any slayer shit on yeah you know, no. those songs on that album are also coming out in insurrection yeah we did debut yeah, a couple of three of yeah. new songs uh on on that live uh release really but i mean episode. you go back and listen to it and it's a whole fucking what hour and 30 hour and 40 minutes yeah, of fucking a threat. That. it was fun whether it be Slayer or Over an Enemy, we got a bunch of originals in there. We got a bunch of Slayer tracks. I mean, who wouldn't love that shit? Right. Fuck, Fuck yes. Great fucking package. Great idea. And like you said, we do whatever the fuck we want. There's no rules to this shit. You make it up as you go the way you want to do it. We're going to go up there. We're going to record a live album and, and whatever. It's just to happen it was to a work happy out. Yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. great quality recording. Yeah. Everything was just crisp. The video was fucking awesome. And then think about it, dude. Like, it's like when I first saw Pantera play Cat Stretch Fever, I fucking shit my pants. I was like, <laughs> yeah. And they was played badass. It. Yeah. So, like, it, for me, it was, it was, it was like that, just us returning the favor. Yes. You know, it's a, 
you know, us, us doing the, we playing the covers, man, it just shows the love that we have for these bands because we wouldn't go to the trouble if if right. if it was any less than fucking totally right. kick ass. Fuck yeah, man! I tell you what. Okay, let me get to some more beef. All right here. So, so then you, we kind of let the cat out of the bag. Resurrection. When do we think we might be able to to get our hands on some resurrection? <laughs> so right now, right yeah. now. But now well, it's about insurrection. It's insurrection. It's all insurrection. We're on that part of the list. So right now it's insurrection that we're. That oh, we're okay. Yeah, I so like where you're going with this. I love political cancer. Um, we're gonna stay off. The, we're gonna stay off the 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 political side. But I, I I'm 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 on the same wavelength. I'm on the same tip, and I like where you're going with it, man. Because we that just what's going on in in in, in the world today gives us a lot to sing about. You know, yeah. there's a lot of fucked up shit going on, a lot of lies, a lot of deception. And, you know, you follow the money, you find out what's where, 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 where what the agenda might be. And so just like back in the in the in the in the Reagan days and the, the early Bush days, there was, you know, uh, um, yeah, should I say, especially Bush, where he, where he says eh, no more taxes and shit like that. You know, it's a lot of a lot of bullshit. And I like I've always I've always liked Megadeth's kind of uh, the political songs, Holy Wars, things like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, so I like I like those those thought provoking kind of lyrics and um, songs that are just more about um, today, what we're living in and what we can all kind of relate to. So I really dig the, I did dig the tracks. So it's going to be insurrection. Insurrection. Yeah. insurrection, insurrection the new Fuck yes, fuck yeah. So maybe and give, me a, clear, give me a, a timeline because I know, I know we're not talking exact, but maybe before the end of the year. So, so to be clear, Tony, we came up with that album title before, before January sixth, or January sixth. Okay. Yes. So yeah. We own the right <laughs> direction. All right. Okay. Fuck um, yeah. Yeah, we kind of freaked out a little bit about that because, like, we're like, God dang it, everything we write is happening. Right. Yeah, no shit. now it's the fucking, uh, it's the uh, the narrative word of the day, right? Shit, this will trip you out. So t tell them what you're gonna say. So when we first started with with Inception, you know, we wrote uh, mercenary and mercenary political and political cancer. cancer. Yeah. So mercenary is about uh, living a life uh, under mercenary law in the uh, on the south side of the border. Right. So, okay. you, you know, you're you're raised under the gun and it, it, it talks a little bit about, uh, you know, the border crisis in there. And then lo and behold, the border crisis happened. So, oh, you yeah. know, after a little bit of and mercenaries, basically, uh, you know, you, you have a choice of either being raised under the gun and doing what you're told or or you try to, you know, you make go. your way across. Right. Or you're, or you're found dead eventually. Right. Because, uh, yeah. you know very being like the cartel you know the cartels running shit and that's yeah. the only thing you've ever you've ever known and then you got political cancer which are these like puppets in in politics nowadays that are pretending to love america and love people and do everything they can when in reality they're just showing and revealing to you how evil they really are and how yeah. uh, you know, so we're, um, we're 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 uh, we're non-denominational in our uh, exactly our, our vitriol uh, against the political class. It's fair cool. to say that all politicians are corrupt. Uh, yeah. Uh, because quite frankly, you can't get in. You can't run for any office of any significance without having to sell out in some way, in some way or form. soul, in some you know, way. Republican. Or, there's, or too much money, there's too many, there's too many compromises. Yeah, exactly. So they're both the sides of the same, of the same, animal, of the same right. animal. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we political, can uh, political cancer was an example of a politician who was basically lying to everybody while trying to suck in the trust and and acquire the power. And once the power is obtained, then they, you know, they they and unleash like, their hey, wrath, what's up? which is right. basically. I mean, no. So when we wrote this, you know, this is like 10, 10 years before Biden came around and right. all this Trump. It, and how ironic thing. how things end up turning was, out. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's it gets weirder, though. Yeah. It so weird. then we get into possession. 
We wrote Possession. So Possession happened, and, and one of our songs is called In the End We Died. And that's yeah. basically about a pandemic, a pandemic that happens where, like, a virus gets spread and everybody becomes, like, this fucking zombie. Yeah, yeah. Be clear. Be clear. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. so we, wrote the, we wrote the pandemic song before the pandemic. Before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you well, guys are like have... another Metallica. You stay ahead of the game, man. <laughs> I love that. That's badass. It's got like ten bangers that may or may not foretell may the future. We don't. We don't well, I hope not, because we right. Crazy Let's shit. hope not. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> I know normally in in our in our metal writing, it's always so aggressive, so destructive, and stuff like that. But it's really not the kind. You know, we're we're very. I can tell that um, the last thing we want is to have anything happen to our neighbors, exactly. to our community. You know what I mean? But we just have this, it's a metal kind of thing where you talk about dragons or wars or shit like that. But it's the last thing we'd ever want to have happen. Yeah. Happens you know? that wrote it. It's kind of like crazy. So another yeah. good example is Blood God. So we wrote the song Blood God because I was inspired by um, Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. Ooh, right, very cool. God, and then in, in, in the song, it's about you know famine and disease, you know, brought to us by our own hand. Um, and then you talk about celestial solstice, which is all the planets lining up, mm, that just and then the blood god, you know, being released, and then all of that shit is now starting to happen. Where it's like in Revelations, all the planets are lining up, and then you have your solar eclipses, and then you have all this talk about a, a you know uh, some kind of entity being summoned. So we're just kind of like, oh shit, you know, we better we better start writing some happy songs because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what direction it's going to be going in. Our, our, uh, Tell our, me about it, dude. Oh our, shit! Basically, like cautionary tales. Yes. Uh, well, we're yes. not. Uh, and, and that's something I always appreciated about Slayer. Like, I, the 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 um, the. the I'm gonna throw Carrie under the bus. The the anti-Christian Carrie King songs yeah. never really appealed to me as a fan. I always gravitated toward the Jeff Hanneman stuff, the stuff about war and about wars. wars. Yeah. The, the crazy stuff really that yeah. happened in the world, right? Uh and so um we kind of stick to that side of the house where uh when we thought about it in retrospect, we're like, holy crap, because we're all you know, Christians, right? We're like, are we a Christian band? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe we are. It's like, everything is just literally like, don't do that. Yeah. Because what happens to you, right? Uh, so it's 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 very interesting. And I think you're going to like the new record because we put a lot of thought into uh, every word that's in every song. And, uh, you know, of course, the music's great, you know. Yes. Topics. Uh, and, and all of that stuff. But there's a wide variety of different topics, yeah. for sure. One Every, thing I can say about this newer album is out of this world. <laughs> is something oh, oh, for everybody. Tony. Oops. Tony's battery died. Uh oh Are we still live? We're still We're alive. We're still alive. Hey, you're alive. That's, that's, that's what it looks like when somebody tries to call at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I love hearing about the, the new album. We're already going on about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna just kind of wrap things up. But the way I like to wrap things up with my with my guests is I do a little segment called Draw the Line. I'm gonna pose some bands, maybe some musicians, and I want you to tell me who you'd prefer to either jam with or maybe go on tour with, or say both of these bands are playing in, in town. Who would you make the decision to go to go see? All right. So I'm gonna hit. We're gonna start with Laura. So, Laura, I'm going to hit you with the first one. These two bands, or well, a matter of fact, these two musicians, and we're we're, we're talking, we're judging them as as the best front men. Who okay. do you like, Laura, between Tom Mariah and James Hetfield? Tom Mariah, hands down. Okay, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm asking. This might not go in my best favor, and I'm glad I put this at the beginning because I know being a Slayer tribute, there's a lot of favoritism there. But, okay, well, you but have to a little bit. But it is Headfield. It is Pop the Head. So, okay, I'll take that. What I didn't do you think, know Leo? Before I joined the band. She knew Metallica. I knew Metallica. I didn't know Slayer. Leo was like, oh, you can play Slayer, right? And I'm like, sure. Let's Tom figure Mariah. it out. That is. Tom Mariah. All right. Tom Mariah. <laughs> what do you think, Leo? Are you going with Tom, too? 
Oh, it's a super hard decision for me, man. Because I, I got both. both yes. um, and uh, fuck. Just front man. Just inclination. Just the front man part. Uh, Just the front man part. Uh, We're not talking about this. I know. That's even harder for me because like both of them are awesome musicians too. So it's yeah. like uh, I'd have to go with I'd have to go with James. He okay. was my, my first inspiration towards you know metal and and metal vocals. You know uh, when it came with the Kill 'Em All and right the Lightning album, it's just brutalness. So yeah, I'd have to go with James Field, man. Awesome, guys. Give me one second. Hold on, right there, Rob. Right, real quick. Hey, hey. Wait, I would make American metal. That's good, everybody. I like it. Hey, so check it out. Insurrection is is coming out this year. We we haven't talked much about the new album, but, but it's it is true. coming out. We do have year. new music that's coming. Yes. And all of us are playing. Tony's not going to hear any of this. All of us are singing lead back. vocals. Yeah. Ten full length songs. We got full length. We got like this album one. art for every song. Dude, it's going to be crazy. We got videos. Guys, for I'm song. so sorry. I had to step out just for a second. Yeah, but, Tony. I don't know if you could hear what I was saying in the background, but my grandson was leaving. He's been with me since like five o'clock this afternoon. I had the interview with Mike. I had the interview with you. And tomorrow I go on vacation for a week. I had to give my little devil a big hug and kiss before he left. All good. You know where I'm coming from. You guys got kids. You know what's up. So, all right. Now that I got that and get my, got the love back. I love my big boy. <laughs> love you, Grayson. Rob, tell me, who's it going to be, best front man, Tom Mariah or James Hetfield? Tom Mariah. <laughs> Mariah? Mariah. Mariah. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking maybe because you started off with the bass, you had some may maybe a little favoritism. Nope. We're not talking about instruments. We're talking about front men. I'm and with you. Yeah, you know. Tom Mariah doesn't give two fucks about what anybody thinks about Tom Mariah. Yeah, I mean, dude, for real. Now, granted, I, I I'd say there's two versions of James Hetfield, right? There's young James and old James. We have the same Tom through yes. the whole through the whole shit from beginning until retirement. So I'd say, as far as if you threw both frontmen in a cage match and they're fighting each other, just based off frontman cap frontman capability, yeah. Tom Raya. Exactly. I think Tom's coming out. I love that. Way to, I love the way you justified all that. Okay, kick ass. Next two are going to be bands. Laura, who do you like between Damage Plan versus Super Joint Ritual? Damage oh, Plan. And Damage Plan. Oh, all right, Damage Plan. All right. <laughs> Leo, you're next. Who do you like out of them two? Oh, I fucking love me some some Philip and Salmo. I really fucking do. And their musicians super joint. Amazing as fuck. But I'm always going to back my boy Dimebag up 100% and Vinny. 100%, no doubt. Those right. are my guys. Those are my kind of Texans. Those are my kind of party goers. I fucking drink Black Tooth Grin every fucking weekend if I can. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every band that we drown with, I try to do it where we're doing the Pantera style. If you fucking jam with our band, you're going to fucking drink with our band. You're going to party with our band. And that's the way metal, I think, should be all the fucking time. So I got to go with Damage Plan. Fuck yeah. I love it. Rob, what do you think? Who do you like out of them two bangers? Damage Plan, Super so, Joint Ritual. This is a tough question. I got it. Are we talking about albums or just the band? The band. Like the bands. Actual, the bands. Who you gonna okay. jam with? Who you gonna jam? With? Oh, who am I gonna jam? With? Oh, well, da damage plan, of course, right? <laughs> uh, but if you're, but if you're comparing the first super joint ritual to uh, pure, pure uh, lethal dose of American hatred versus yeah. the the only damage plan album that we have, I gotta say I'd give the album to super joint. Uh, because that album just rips Fucking ass. Brutal. Uh, I love it. And every time I listen to Damage Plan, it makes me sad because I can hear how, it, to me anyway, like it just seems like that. I, I think that the second Damage Plan album, if they had been able to make one, 
would have dusted it by like a thousand percent. Yeah. But every, t- every time I hear that first one, to me, it sounds like, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I like, as it just as a guitar player, like I, I hear it. I don't know. To, it just, it's a sad album to me. You know what I mean? Not, not sad. Like it's bad. Just, I, I don't know. You like, the like, potential. You I, I don't think Dimes playing is as, as inspired on that record as it okay. is on all the Pantera albums. And I think it's because... Ah, because all right. It, yeah. You know, like, and I read actually a really cool interview with Sterling Winfield today where he's talking about it was going to be a solo album and it was going to have guest musicians on it and stuff yeah. like that. And that was really interesting. Um, and then they ended up making a band out of it uh, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Very long, cool. Question. So damage planet, damage planet. <laughs> damage, damage planet. planet is damage hey. planet is hell yeah. Well, how about these two? What do you like, Laura, between Soulfly and Sepultura? Oh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't because we play with Soulfly. I love playing with Soulfly. They've been a which, blast. Which, but, are, wait, wait, which, which is Sepultura? it? Old Sepultura oh, or Max Sepultura, Sepultura, Sepultura or Derek Sepultura? That's yeah. Let's say, oh, that's a good question. Let's do, let's do first two soul flies versus um, beneath the remains and arise. <laughs> Which one is it? I don't know. Old I can't pick them. Well, Are we doing I would, band or album. I would pick old school Sepultura. I mean, yeah, I cut my teeth on them. Shit, yeah. All right, all right. Oh, we love that arise. Love that shit, and yeah. they they kind of changed things up with Chaos AD. They they they, they changed the game right there. It was fucking bad. The fucking way here, so you, you don't even hear the re-recording. Me. Schizophrenia, fucking beneath the remains, fucking arise, fucking uh, yeah, everything that's that's pre Derek. And I love Derek. I love Derek, and I love the 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 subcultura that is now. But like for me, it's Max and and Igor. Yeah. All the fucking way. Yes. Hell yes. What do you think, Rob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't have. Uh, I'm waiting to 2026 when they announce that Sepultura is going to get back together with the original lineup. Fuck yeah. I'm calling it. Yeah. What's going to happen? Are we playing with them? We're playing with them. Oh, yeah. I hope so. That, would, that would be sweet. Too. No, seriously, though, we don't know shit about shit. No. We're just speculating as fanboys and girls. Uh, but I would say that 1996 is when Roots came out, and 2026 will be the 30th anniversary of Roots. And yeah. coincidentally, Sepultura is doing their farewell tour through next year. And mm-hmm. I have a sneaking suspicion that you're going to start, you'll see uh, uh, oh, yeah. the old school lineup start headlining. Yes. And making great. that money. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? They it's going to be great. Fuck yeah. I, was, <laughs> I hope they do. Yes, but, I hope they do. But, I was going down the stream for uh, for Mike DeLeon, and I came across uh, a link to an interview with, with Max mentioning the 40-year reunion of Sepultura with the last with the last tour, and it's looking good. I think he might have said yes, but I think it's the right thing for metal. And I think the Cavaletta brothers are going to make Dude, it right. Can you imagine we could have Pantera and Sepultura on tour together? Fuck yeah. I know, right? Like the legacy, the legacy <laughs> tour meets up with the 40th anniversary. Fuck okay. yeah, dude. That's the shit right there. All right. I like that. Okay. How about these guys? Laura, who do you like between Fear Factory and Kamira? Fear Factory. Uh, okay, all right. I know you guys are coming, and and Dino probably. Yeah, I know I got Dino's got some love for Kamira too. So if it's all I right, almost, I know you I, guys. You guys got the opening spot anyway. But what do you think, Leo? I love me some Chimera. I really do. When I first saw them, they came out on a, a Tonight Show, I believe it was. Uh, oh, but wow! It, it did come out on on the Tonight Show. I'm trying to remember who it was. It was Jay Leno or. One, One of those, those late night shows. It was a late Probably night Conan. show. Conan always had the metal. And uh, but man, Fear Factory has had me since demanufactured. Man, I've been a Fear Factory fucking buff since the early '90s, and I've always yeah 
you know, fucking love those guys. I saw them at Ozfest two times. Um, and they've always just fucking blown me away with their style of, of, of their clean vocals over that heavy metal shit was just out of this yes. fucking world, man. So yeah, yes. I'm factory all the way. You know, D Manufacture was a definitely the game changer for them right there. They had the best production, the best fucking riffs, the tightness that we never we never heard before. You know, yeah. uh, Raymond on drums right there with Dino was just amazing. Fuck, yeah. love that album. Love that one. Rob, yeah. what do you think? Team Dino, baby, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's not just because we, like, you know, are, are going to play with them August 30th at the House of Rock in Corpus Christi, Texas. Tickets on sale at over at enemy.com. <laughs> no, uh, that, be there. No. That's right. Be there. <laughs> uh, for, for real, uh, like, I love Chimera. Um, uh, but without Dino, there would be no Chimera. You know what I mean? Like without okay. Dino, yeah. Robert Pond, there would be no Overt Enemy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. Um, they sure so, influence us quite yeah. a bit. And I honestly, I am so excited for the new Fear Factory album. Uh, you know, we we know those guys. Uh, Milo, the new vocalist, he's awesome. Yes. We got to see him. We we drove all the way to fucking El Paso. Dino called us and he was wow. like, hey. You guys want to come play with us? We're like, yeah. yeah. Where? El Paso. Fuck, really? 13 hours. All right, Let's we'll be it. there. Let's go. <laughs> and so, oh, fuck yes. so we went to El Paso last year to jam with them uh, when they were first doing their live dates. And, dude, they've conquered the world with this yeah. new line. Oh, man, it's they're so good. See. The whole yeah. band is just fucking fantastic. Fucking awesome. Uh, fuck yeah. Oh, is, is just the riff god. Uh, yeah, so, so super down, nice, man. you know, and the, 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 the new vocalist is awesome. So I, 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 I and, and honestly, Burden is a dick. So <laughs> yeah, there's that too. So we'll tell you that story another time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Fear Factory all day. All right. I love it. Okay, okay. I got two more for you. Now this one right here, best singer guitarist. Is it Hetfield or Mustaine, Laura? Mustaine. Mustaine. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Leo, yeah, what do you think? I have to go Mustaine. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, you know, okay. It's very so controversial. I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with my wife. I have to say Mustaine because he is way better playing guitar than, than James could ever be. He uh, is, bro. Yeah. On top of that. On top of that he fucking kept it hard. He kept it hard even through uh through thirteen nineties. Through all the nineties. <laughs> Risk kind of was kind of. He still kept it hard, yeah. and and I gotta hand it to him because don't forget about Super Collider. But you gotta yeah. <laughs> here. But you gotta hand it to him because he had a unique style that I really did enjoy. Yeah. So James, James yeah. was very commercial for me. You know, very, you know, yeah. And I love James. Yeah, but he doesn't even do that. Anymore. But Mustaine had that, you know, that raspy, <laughs> yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? Like, he kept it, you know, for me, vicious. he yeah. kept it a yeah. little bit, you know, aggressive. And I really like that. As far as the guitar, I mean, hands down, it's going to be Mustaine. Mustaine, got you. What do you think, Rob? <laughs> oh, this is a hard Okay, Stinger, <laughs> Hatfield. Guitarist Mustang. So uh -huh. the combo together, I, I got to give it to Hetfield. I think Hetfield's written more songs uh, that are, I, I, I'm a big fan of really good songwriters. And I think yeah, me too. James has written more excellent songs, not just like fucking crazy <laughs> guitar compositions. I mean, you can't take away anything from like Tornadoes, yes. you know, anything like that. For but sure. For yeah person that isn't like a guitar nerd that like fucking loves shredding or whatever like Hatfield's just written a lot of really kick-ass songs like albums and albums and albums yeah of amazing fucking songs you know what i mean uh so oh, yeah, yeah. Hatfield. Hey, good. 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 big respects pop ahead and big respects to dave mustaine two legends that that I wish have, yeah. have paved the way for all of all of our bands Tony, let me ask you a question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's your lineup. Okay. And you got to pick the drummer for this band. Okay. Okay. So it's 
Hetfield and Mustaine. John Bush on vocals. Who's, who's, playing, um, who's on vocals? John Bush is going to play. Okay. And, oh, you got excited. Look at your eyes got big. I like uh, John Bush. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, who Who's playing bass and who's uh, playing drums? Ooh. Okay. Hetfield and Mustaine and John Bush. Who's playing bass and who's playing drums? Do they have to be alive? No. Okay. Anybody. I like that. Well, then I got to give Cliff on bass and on okay. drums. On drums. Ooh. Wow. Lombardo. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say Lombardo. So we can. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Awesome. We're friends. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm in there. Hey, but I mean, those are the guys right there Lombardo and Cliff. I mean, shit, if they're not playing with anybody, you got to get them. They, yeah. they, they should make an EP and do it for charity. And all the proceeds go to charity. Yeah. They should, before they're all too old to do that shit. It Seriously. would be awesome, man. Seriously. Like a five. That's a fucking good idea. Yes. Okay, I got one more, and then we're going to wrap things up for tonight. But I think this might be a tricky one. Laura, who's it going to be between Slayer and Pantera? Oh, okay. They're both playing down there, and you're playing in your hometown. One's uh, on the south side, one's on the on the north side. Which show are you gonna house? go to? But but Pantera now or Pantera then? That's old Pantera. Oh, Pantera. Yes. Uh, Pantera then. Oh, let's, no, let's say, no, let's, say uh, let's make it uh, seasons in, seasons in the abyss versus uh, far beyond driven. Right, you can't do it. No, it has to be it has to be Vinny and Dime. <laughs> it has to be what? I would go see Pantera, yeah. Yeah, Vinny Dime, for sure. You know, the thing is, is that I have discographies for both bands on my phone. I listen to both bands all the time. So that one's like, that one's a hard one. Trixie. Yeah. Uh, I'd pick Pantera. Pantera, okay. Okay, much love. Hell yeah. What do you think, Leo? Oh... <laughs> It's me being a vocalist and doing a bunch of Slayer for a long fucking time. Oh, man. It's hard. Uh, it's extremely hard. But, you know, for me, I think the guys that I relate to closely to uh, is going to be Pantera. Oh, I'm, shit. I'm, I'm okay. Fucking, fucking party with Dime. Like, one of my yeah. life goals, and to be honest, this is my honest truth, and I told these guys... <laughs> One of my lifelong goals was to be able to play on stage with Pantera. Fuck yeah. Time passed. This is before Vinny passed. That was my goal. Like, I want to be a good musician and then be in a band that's famous. And I want to take the stage. Not only do I want to fucking watch and play, but I want to be at that level with them. I never got to achieve that. So I think it had to yes. be Pan fucking Terra, man. Yes. Fuck yeah. I love that. Love it, Leo. Rob, give me some Slayer or Pantera. Come on. You know you want to say it. Fucking Slayer. <laughs> Fucking Slayer. <laughs> well, we're in a I had to get one of y'all. I had to get one of y'all at least. Yes, hell yeah. But it's so hard, man. I don't no, know where I would that, go on that, that one either. That, that is predicated on the idea that I could go see Pantera again. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, like the or some yeah. shit. Yeah, if but, it was yeah. tag is alive again for one night only. No, there, there we are. We're there. Yeah, yeah. Sarah. You know it. You know it. Oh man, if only, right? If only one day we're gonna be able to go. Hopefully, we're gonna get to that to the other side where we're gonna have the fucking biggest concert that we could ever imagine with Lenny, with with Ronnie James Dio, with fucking Dude. Paul Gray and Joey Jordanson and Cliff Burton, and. Yeah. Jesus, the, the the list goes on of, of so many guys that, that that we that we grew up listening to and, and being influenced by that one day maybe we're gonna be over there and wherever that, that other side may be, we're gonna be there to fucking enjoy it with those guys. Fuck yeah. Man, you guys have been a great guest tonight, man. So so cool getting to know y'all and, and hearing about your history and you know your influences that really kind of make overt enemy become its own beast after just becoming an idea of an of a slayer tribute band turning into a fucking a phenomenal slayer tribute band that you had to show your own skill out of all that yeah that slayer is a shit there always will be 
one of our favorite bands to the very end. But at the same time, it gave you an opportunity and a venue to put out the original music and get that crowd that was there to see Slayer to buy them in to Over an Enemy. So now it's all over an enemy. Little Slayer here and then, whenever you feel like you like you need that little, yeah. you know, yeah. that that the charge or that bloodline are going into you, you know what I mean? And it's hard to say no to a Slayer cover at the end of the night. Angel of Death is, is you kill it every time with that. It's almost like a given. We we, we play yeah. we, we we play a lot of different covers at like rehearsal, you know. Yeah. Uh, is like he knows a lot of songs and like mutually and we're all like oh what are you doing um and uh you know Saul is very influenced by Sepultura uh you know Igor so I mean our big influences as a band is Pantera, Slayer, Sepultura, Fear Factory that's the music that we grew up on that got us into yeah and you can us. hear our but I think yeah. I think what I'm excited about is all the new bands. I really think like we're in like a renaissance of heavy music right Fucking now. Like, my, my wife listens to a lot of pop music and I'm here. And so I hear in the new pop music that they're playing, guitars are coming back into the arrangements now. I'm like, yeah, yeah are there? That's, that's what I'm talking they're about. They're incorporating and metal so core now. Yeah. Too. Yeah. So <laughs> Fuck, yeah. on and everything. And so, you know, uh, I, I'm just excited about all the new bands that are. I know we've spent a lot of time talking about old bands, you know, on uh, on the show today, uh, and and that's awesome. But there, we highly encourage everybody that if you're listening to this, go discover a new band today. Uh, just random, find somebody. There's a million bands out there that are Fuck kicking yeah. ass, and if you don't know of any. DM us and we'll give Fuck you a list yeah, of man. like 10 or check we'll out our list. Check list on Spotify. We have a Spotify playlist. Fuck yeah, we got a playlist. Uh, that's called This Is Over to Enemy. And it's, I think it's up to like 15 hours of music now. Fuck yeah. Uh, but there. yes. Dude. Awesome, Sorry. man. I, I love the advice. Exactly, man. Let's keep pushing these newer bands. Let's keep pushing the, the Texas Underground. Let's bring them up. You know, when, 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 when high tide rises, all the ships come up. So the good positive vibes and, and, and and really just the camaraderie and the props being thrown out to all the guys that are just busting their ass, you know, doing what it takes, sacrificing and working two jobs, whatever it takes to keep the family provided for, but still keeping that that band going because that's just kind of your lifeline and something you need in your life. Um, thanks for recognizing that, man, because there's so many bands out there that, that uh, right now there's a million bands doing metal and Everybody does it their own way. And that's the best special thing about it is when you get together and do and make some fucking metal with your best friends, you make your own history. You make your own stamp on history and music world history. And you get to do it with the people you love. So I'm you're blessed to be able to do it with with your wife, your better half, Leo. And Lori, to be able to do it with your husband is fucking awesome. Um, I'd love to do it with my wife. <laughs> Right, got, hey, right. Something uh, used, man. Hey, I noticed you got that battle vest back there, bro. We gotta send you one of these fucking badass patches so you can represent dude, for us. Absolutely, hell yeah! I'll definitely put it on there. Yeah, but I've been sporting this vest. I put this one together. You gotta get one of these back. This red one back. This is what we got Fuck yeah, Machine dude. Head, some Metallica in there. I got, you know, I got a Slayer. Boybot, Pantera, God, it's good stuff. Same stuff you guys got on your stuff. You know what I mean? With, with uh, bad ah. green or red. Gentlemen and and Laura, you guys have been excellent, man. So much. Uh, I had a really great time talking to y'all, and I can't wait to meet you in person here, August thirtieth. Everybody out there watching the show tonight, if you're here in Corpus, if you're in the Valley or San Antonio, get your ass to Corpus for August thirtieth. We're gonna have Throat Locust. We're gonna have our very own Overt Enemy there on the show. Also, Wednesday 13, Black Satellite, and the immortal Fear Factory is going to be in town. Don't yeah, miss yeah. that show. Don't miss Overt Enemy over here. Get there early. Get some merchandise from Overt Enemy. They got some killer shirts. Love the fucking logo. Love the merchandise I've seen. And grab a vinyl. Grab some fucking vinyl. I got a lot of vinyl collectors here in Corpus. Bring it. You guys are going to definitely do some good sales, man. So, once again, Robert, Leo, Laura, pleasure meeting you guys and uh, hope to see you in person. 
over here on the 30th. Thanks for being on the show tonight. You want to say bye to anybody? Just to everybody out there who's watching this right now, uh, for all the fans that have supported us in the past and everybody who's just giving a fuck about us, even if, uh, you know, we've been a little slow in the game, we're coming back. We're going to rock your fucking socks off and we're going to do everything we can to fucking make you have a good time. And, and, uh, we're not going to, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to die. We're going to keep fucking rocking, keep fucking jamming out. And we're going to be in your city eventually. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, to, to my lovely wife, uh, Deanna and my sons, Logan and Travis. Uh, you know, without them, I wouldn't be me and I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And so, uh, uh, we, we also want to, again, thank all the fans out there. We've, I think, built one of the most positive uh, community of metal fans anywhere on the Internet. Uh, I mean, we've had people say, hey, you know what? I don't even like your music, but we like you guys. Uh, and that's pretty cool. You know, I saw that. Cool. I was like, hey, yeah. that's cool with me. Uh, but, uh, you know, just a bunch of rabid metal fans that – uh, are our extended, you know, metal family. And this band is y'all's band just as much as it is our band. Plus, and yeah. we, we can be as successful as you guys want us to. So if you guys want us to play in your town, share the music with your friends, uh, you know, let your promoters know, go to our website over at enemy.com. You can request a show. All of those stats, the Spotify things, all those numbers, well, they all matter a whole lot to bands at our level. And we're climbing ladders. That's what we're doing right now. And, uh, you know, we, we can't uh, hit the road like our brothers in cell and tore their balls off in, in a van like they're doing uh, because we've got family commitments and, and, and all of that. But we're, uh, we're the hardest core group of weekend warriors I think you'll ever find. And, uh, you know we're we're coming to your town in texas uh this year next year and we've got big plans uh you know after that too for the new new album and we will drop a new single before we go play that fear factory show Fuck and yeah. uh we're also headed to dallas uh at pure core, pure core metal, metal fest. fest in fort worth uh this summer as well so we'll, we'll see you on the road hell yeah i love that that's right pure core metal fest also with Within Chaos, my friends, and Within Chaos and Rose Funeral headlining yeah. that bad boy. It's going to be a big one in Fort Worth. That's going to be August 17th. And uh, just a reminder, August 30th right here, Fear Factory. Go to over at Enemy, uh, guys out there over at Enemy.com. Go to their Facebook page. Go to Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give them a like. Open up your notifications. Catch them next time you're here in town and go by and say what's up, all right? Tell them you saw them on the show. And to you guys. Keep up the fucking, keep up the metal, and like your song says, fucking go hard and go the fuck home, right? Keep it live. Keep it hard, guys. Until okay. we meet again here in August, I'll see you soon, man. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate the opportunity. Have a good night. Bye, y'all. Hell yeah. Thank you, brothers. Take care. And sister, appreciate you, Laura. Leo, Rob, super band. Give my love to Saul, and fuck yeah. Keep it hard. Go hard or go home, everybody. You heard him. Woo. Later, See you next time, guys. Later. Later. Peace.